Hey, what's going on guys? This is Chad and we are back playing Bloodborne. Alright, today we are going to... Let's see, what are we going to do? We've got the Cleric Beast and we've also got Father Gascoigne. That's the area we left off last time. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fight the Cleric Beast first because he's the easier of the two. And also once we go fight him, we'll get our first insight and then we can level up before we fight Father Gascoigne. To Central Yard. And actually, one of the cool things you can do, you don't actually have to fight the Cleric Beast uh, to be able to level up. All you've got to do is go into the area where it's at, and then you can use one of the bold hunter marks to teleport out and then level up and then go back. Actually, I think that's what we're going to do. Just to give us a little bit of an advantage. So head left at the lamp. And right now, we're not even really worried about these guys. We are on a mission. Here we go again. And before you run into let's go ahead and get our bolt. So as soon as you come right about to where the wagon is, he's going to jump out of it. And there. There he is. Hello, fella. Actually, I've never tried this. Let's see if we can... And you'll notice up there in the top right, we do have one insight now. You got that simply by walking in there with them. So now we'll go level up real quick, come back, and wreck some shit. Any day now. Here we go. It's a shame that that mark doesn't just take you back to the hunter's dream because that's basically what everyone's going to be doing. But nonetheless, now you can see this doll has awakened. Hello, good hunter. I am a doll here in this dream to look after you. Honorable hunter, pursue the echoes of blood and I will channel them into your strength. You will hunt beasts, and I will be here for you, to embolden your sickly spirit. Okay, you're going to want to go to channel blood echoes. Use blood echoes to raise really steps. Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. I'm strength, lady. I'm on skill. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. Okay, now you can see all our different stats here. Okay, and you've got all the different levels here that you can go up on. And you can see our skill is already pretty high, so we're not going to touch that one for right now. And what I was talking about earlier with the weapons scaling differently, if let's just say you wanted to add a point of skill, so hit the right D-pad. And you can see our right hand weapon attack went up by one point. But if you remember, we scale less with strength, so let's see what happens if we add one point of strength. It boosts our physical defense, but that's it, so... Let's add another point just to see. Nothing. Let's add another point. So see, we'd have to add three points just to get any kind of boost uh, to that weapon damage. So for right now, we're going to focus on Vitality. And just above this, you can see how many Blood Echoes you have left. That's the red number. And then right below that's Required. That's how many it's going to take for whatever you have selected. So. Let's just go all vitality and then one of the units. And then go down to the bottom and confirm. Yes. Farewell, good hunter. Yeah, farewell to you too, lady. In the waking world. Okay, and then we 
we've got this new item here. Consume insight and ring the beckoning bell to enlist cooperation of hunters from other worlds. And that's going to be if you're playing online, you can ring that bell and have someone with uh, that's co-op. They can come help you fight a boss. Let's run in here for the first time on set. You must be the new hunter. Welcome to the hunter's dream. This will be your home for now. I am Gammon, friend to you hunters. You're sure to be in a fine haze about now, but don't think too hard about all of this. Just go out and kill a few beasts. It's for your own good. You know, it's just what hunters do. You'll get used to it. Okay, you can talk to him again if you want. He just basically keeps reiterating the same thing. Go out and kill beasts. This over here is going to be the workshop. Uh, it's where we can fortify our weapons, repair them, and later we'll be able to do blood gym mods there. And let's see. And then in the top right, you've got your bloodstone shards. Uh, the next level up for this weapon is going to take three, and then the number to the right of that's 11. That's how many we have, so let's go ahead and hit that. And you can see it'll go, our damage will go from 78 to 85. Yes. And the next level is going to take five. Let's go ahead and do that also. And every time you fortify your weapon, it'll automatically repair it, so you don't have to worry about it. This is going to be the memory altar. That's where you'll get runes later on. And then we'll run out here. This is going to be, well, if we didn't fall off, that's going to be the insight shot up there. Insight shop, excuse me. And this is going to be where you purchase items with the regular blood echoes. Let's put all that aside and go fight the cleric beast. That's going to be the workshop tool we need to find in the world in order to put our wounds on. Not there yet. Okay, we're just going to go over some quick boss tips. Uh, one thing you definitely want to have in your inventory before you go in is going to be oil urns and also molotovs. That just lets us get some... We are going the wrong way, people. That just lets us get some free damage. And it takes him down pretty good because he is a beast. Interrupted me when I'm talking. And if you didn't have as many blood echoes as I did, you can always just spend some time running around, killing people. Okay, you can see I've got my oil urns, and also the molotovs. Throw an oil urn. Back up so we don't hit you. Molotov. Hit him again. Oh, we missed on that one. That is new. No big deal. Yeah. And you can see those do quite a bit of damage.
he can actually get a visceral off of this guy. Get hit him in the head. That he is done. And typically, let's see, we got our first badge there, Sword Hunter badge. Let's go back and light this lamp. And you can see that we beat him, and so we got three more insight added. Get this little item right over here. And he's honestly pretty simple, maybe not your first time. Uh, if you start swinging, just dodge around him. If you can do what I did and just try to lock onto him and stay behind him after you run out of Molotovs, you can see he's pretty easy and uh, you can just sit there and whale away on him with your charged attacks. And so we're going to go back to the Hunter's Dream real quick and get a couple more levels and then we'll go fight Gas Lord. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention with that, uh, the beckoning bell that we picked up there. If you're offline, there's going to be certain bosses where you can ring that to have an NPC help you fight the boss. And you'll know that's the case. There'll be a little orange glowing thing on the ground. And you can just walk over to it and it'll ring the bell for you and it'll summon someone. Two more in vitality. We're going to need our extra health for Gascoigne. He's definitely a lot more difficult than the Cleric Beast was. And we'll go... That'll work. One thing you're definitely going to want to have out for Gascoigne is going to be the tiny music box. Don't need that now. And basically what that music box does is you play it and it kind of basically stuns him for a couple seconds so you can run up and get a backstab off on him and that'll let you get your visceral attack. Usually that ball goes flaming down way sooner than that. No big deal. We're through it. Okay. And then this fight's basically going to work in three phases. You got the first one, we'll have a normal Hunter Axe. And then once you get him down, uh, probably about 30% or so, he'll transform that into an extended axe, which has a lot more range and he also becomes more aggressive and then his final stage he transformed into a beast and at that point you really just want to dodge away from him as much as you can because he's going to be doing jump attacks and all sorts of stuff but I guess the best way is just to show you Let's 
let's do this. There's actually a really good spot right here. And he does frequently use his guns. So keep that and we're gonna go ahead and play the tiny music box. Ooh, that did not work. I forgot I had to have the short version out. Lesson learned. No big Do it one more time. Oh, we missed. Not the end of the world. I think it lets you use it three times. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold off on using it again until he gets transferred into his uh, super beast mode. Okay, now we're in stage two. You can see his axe has got huge, and he's gonna have a lot of range on it now. So <laughs> That attack right there can easily one-shot you. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and do the music box one more time. There we go. Oh, it's too late for crap. Okay, now he's going into beast form. Okay guys, and we're back. I actually had to kill some of the guys on the way here just to get my blood vials back up. Now once you come in here the second time, let's get our blood vials. He's going to immediately be charging at you, so just be ready for it. You can actually pull off a visceral on him if you want, or parry rather. Second mode. Thing. 
thing. It's ridiculous. He's about to transform. Get that music box ready. Okay, light the lamp here. Now, if you remember that NPC person we talked to about their mom missing and we had to find her, just come up the stairs, hang a left. You can see that item right there. That is going to be the red jeweled brooch. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can either go take it back to her, which really doesn't do you any benefit whatsoever. You can also consume it and that'll give you your first blood gem. And then we're about to get the blood gem tool that you need to put that on. So I prefer to just honestly consume it. If you go talk to her, she's not going to give you anything. And then later on you can continue her quest line. It basically involves going back and talking to her and either telling her to go somewhere safe or not telling her and it ultimately ends up with you getting a type of messenger decoration for the hunter's dream but I never really found those interesting so I'll let you decide if you want to go back and talk to her just a little lore note there make sure you get this chest blood gem workshop tool that's what we need And this is our entry into Cathedral Ward. And don't feel too bad on Gascoigne if it takes you, you know, 10 tries or even 20. He, he's honestly pretty difficult. And you can see to get that either the parry attack or the backstab, you've got to be really quick. And it pretty much just has to line up perfectly in your favor. I think the first time I fought him, I probably died about 30 times in a row. And I was honestly ready to just quit the game. Just, just keep at it and you will get it. Let's go ahead and light the lamp here. And we skipped over this one NPC. Let's talk to him and then we'll close out this episode. Oh, you must be... A hunter? Very sorry. The incense must have masked your scent. Good, good. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. These hunts have everyone all locked up inside. Waiting for it to end. It always does. Always has, you know. Since forever. But it won't end nicely. Not this time. Even some folks hiding inside are going bad. The screams of women folk. The stench of blood, the snarls of beasts, none of them's too uncommon now. Yarnum's done for, I tell ya. But if you spot anyone with their wits about them, tell them about this here Erden Chapel. They'll be safe here. The incense wards off the beasts. Spread the word. Tell them to come on over. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Okay, so basically that just gave us our first safe spot that we know about and we can tell people now to come here That actually reminded me about one other one that we're gonna go get real quick okay, 
first floor sick room. Okay, the lamp, go ahead and hit the left and go back to the staircase. Oh, well, hello. Splendid. Let me ask you a small kindness. You're soon off to hunt, I presume? Then, if you find any survivors, tell them to seek Yusefka's clinic. Upon my Hippocratic oath, if they are yet human, I will look after them. Perhaps even cure them. This sickness, these beasts, they are not to be feared. This time the night is long. I may be trapped here, but I should do something to help. I'll even offer a reward for your cooperation. Tempted? Well... Off you go then. Okay, we're gonna talk to her one more time. Who's still human? Send them straight to Yusefka's clinic. You can assure them there's no place safer. Please do me this service. Let's make that three times. If you find anyone who's still human, send them straight to Yusefka's clinic. You can assure them there's no place safer. Please. If you find it, please. Well, there's some way you can talk to her and she gives you a certain blood vial that basically is more potent than the ones we get normally. It may only be if you talk to her before you fight Father Yes. But nonetheless, uh, that place you can actually get it as a safe haven to where you can tell people about it but what it doesn't tell you is basically anyone you send there is going to be experimented on and die so there's really no reason to send anyone there except for one person in the game and we're going to complete out that other quest line real quick That's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, make sure to leave a like or feel free to subscribe. Uh, next video, we'll pick up where we left off at.